Hello everyone, Sonley here and welcome back to another episode of Bug Rock of the Week. Today we're going to be switching gears a little bit and taking a look at some bugs that Mojang will not fix in the Bedrock Edition. They've been fixing hundreds upon hundreds of bugs in the recent updates and betas, but there are a few bugs that they've decided, nah, not going to fix that one or it works as intended. And in some circumstances, this is actually a great thing for us players. It gives us more things to play with, more things to do, and more mechanics to mess around around with, so this isn't entirely a bad thing. In fact, it's actually quite a nice thing in several different ways. So uh, let's check it out, shall we? And first things first is Trident Killers. These things are extremely nice and I'm very, very happy that Mojang is not planning on fixing them anytime soon. And you know that they are actually pretty overpowered. We don't have a sweeping edge on the Bedrock Edition, but Trident Killers more than makes up for that when it comes to redstone and mob farming. You can throw a Trident, this thing can kill an infinite number of mobs and never degrade. Not only that, you can put channeling and impaling on the Tridents and those enchantments will actually work. As you can see, it kills the creepers in basically one hit because these have impaling five on them, and this is a water-based trident killer. And if we set it to a thunderstorm, you can see that it like works for that as well. <laughs> Overall, yeah, Trident Killers are the bestest. I'm really, really fond of these things. We've had them for several updates at this point, and over that amount of time, they have broken several times, so we've had to redesign them a couple times here or there. But overall, Trident Killers shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon on the Bedrock Edition. Our next bug is not nearly as nice as Trident Killers, and this has to do with strongholds and end portal frames not generating. That's right, sometimes a stronghold hold will not generate an end portal, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of having the stronghold, doesn't it? So this is a consequence of the way that strongholds generate. They want to prevent overlap, and that means that there's a very small chance that a stronghold, simply put, will not have a portal for you to use, which is kind of a bad consequence, but there's only so much that you can do when it comes to the generation of structures in this game. So if you've ever found a stronghold in your world and you've been poking around it for hours, breaking through walls, blowing up things, using the eyes of Ender, getting your friends to help you and you still can't find a portal, that might just mean that you found a stronghold that does not have a portal at all, which is very, very unfortunate and a very frustrating thing to have happen. People used to come to me way back in the day and have me help them find their stronghold portals because I'm very good at finding these, but one faithful day, we discovered a stronghold that simply put did not have one. We destroyed the entire thing in creative with TNT. There was no portal. That was a sad day and a sad realization that not every fortress has a portal to be discovered. Unlike strongholds, our next bug is way more interesting, way more useful, and way more fascinating as well, and that is the torch bug, or soft inversion as it's been dubbed by the community. This has been around for a very long time, and basically whenever there is a redstone torch attached to a piston or a sticky piston, and then that piston gets powered, all of those torches will churn off. This is incredibly convenient for countless contraptions. It doesn't really break anything and it is so useful for compactification of redstone circuits and transferring signals. So this right here, this little demonstration makes perfect logical sense, right? It starts to make a little bit less sense once you move over into these areas, which is why it was reported to the bug tracker. As you can see, if we flick this lever, both the lamps turn on, but the torch is still on, of course, because that's not being hard powered. If we power this block, then of course the torch would turn off. However, that's not the case with a piston. If you power the piston in any way, then the torch will get turned off as well, even if the piston does not extend, which is incredibly convenient, albeit a little bit buggy. This was officially marked as won't fix on the bug tracker, so unless they accidentally break it somehow, we can use this feature to our heart's desire. Personally, I never use this in my redstone contraptions because I always forget that it's no longer considered a bug, so I just avoid it, even though I really shouldn't. I need to be using this a lot more. It is so convenient for so many different things, and honestly, you can make a lot of just really fun, quirky circuits out of it. For as nice as the torch bug is, it doesn't quite make up for the randomness of hoppers on the Bedrock Edition. This is something I've been complaining about and reporting for years at this point, and it still frustrates me to this day. 
Hoppers have a random item transfer system, so they don't transfer items in the order that they should. So you would expect the items to end up in that chest in this exact order. However, if we let them flow through this hopper line into this chest, you'll see that they don't quite end up in here in the correct order. As you can see, the second item, the skeleton skull, is all the way in the fifth place. And our best pie... Is that supposed to be renamed Pi is the best? But yeah, you get the idea. Everything is all forms of switched around. What is this? It's crazy. That should not be how it is. But it is how it is. And this is a works as intended feature. Something you builders might have noticed is that whenever you go to strip any kind of wood or logs, there is no sound at all. Yep, as you can see, absolute dead silence. No pun intended. Now, if we head over to the Java edition, you can actually see that there is indeed a sound for stripping logs over here. It's a very basic sound, but this is works as intended on the Bedrock edition. And next up, we have a weird little works as intended feature from five years ago in 2015. Now, surprisingly, this is actually on Bedrock Edition and Java Edition as well. But the issue here is that all mob heads and player heads have the same particle, and that is soul sand particles when you break the head. So as you can see, Steve head, it's got soul sand particles everywhere when you break it. The zombie head, soul sand particles. Creeper head, soul sand particles. Dragon head's got soul sand particles. The skeleton has got soul sand particles. And then the wither skeleton has soul sand particles as well. Now for the wither skeleton, that could make sense lore wise for it to have those particles. It can make sense because of its ties to the wither boss. I could see that logical gap there. However, for the rest of these, no. If you can think of a real reason why these other five mob heads should have soul sand particles when you break them, let me know in the comment section down below. Because I think Minecraft is more powerful in 2020 than it was in 2015, so maybe we can have some custom particles for these six different blocks in the game. That would be very nice, because honestly, this is just such a weird little thing that's on both Bedrock and Java Edition. I did my research on this. I went through all of the different bug reports that I could find on the bug tracker, and the main apparent bug report is still from 2015, and there's absolutely no explanation as to why it uses these particles. So, for reals, if you got an idea, or if you know about this little teeny tiny bit of trivia for Minecraft, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm actually very curious. I get kind of obsessed about these weird little Minecraft things. Let me know what you think about today's episode of Bug Rock of the Week. I thought it'd be kind of interesting to go through and look at some of the bugs that Mojang won't fix because we've talked about many, many hundreds upon hundreds of bugs that they have fixed or that they need to fix on the Bedrock Edition, but never once have we paid attention to the ones that they choose to not fix because they think it should be the way that it is. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching today's episode of Bug Rock of the Week. I do greatly appreciate it. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more episodes like this in the future. If you enjoyed this video, of course, make sure to leave a like. It helps out the video and the channel a ton. And I'll see you all down in the comment section and in the next one. Thank you so very much for watching. And then there was silence.